Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live. Tonight we have special guest Victor Dubro with us. And Victor has an interesting story, but he is on set right now. He's not an active police officer. Uh, Victor, thank you no, so much. No, I am too. <laughs> Victor, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, how's it going on All set right. today? Uh, it's, it's great, actually. And I got to give you a little bit of correction, though. I'm, I, I'm a police officer. I'm just not working in a police officer capacity right now. Oh, I'm so you are still in, in an cop. acting. Yeah, so I'm a full time police officer, but right tonight I'm an actor. <laughs> and um, you are filming, is it a TV show or a movie right now? I keep re accidentally referring to move, a film, but it's 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 a television series. It's a horror television series. Uh, it, it tentatively working titles called The Clowns. Uh, and we're about 40% away through, uh, you know, principal photography, basically knocking out all the hard parts. Um, mm -hmm. But we're in, located in Frederick, Maryland right now. Um, but it's a great, great script, a 300 page script, eight episodes. Um, and it took me just a couple of days to, to read through. And I'm acting as a police consultant on the, the set as well with the producers and directors. That's awesome. So let's get to your story. You have a very interesting yep. story. You're a cop and you told me about a year ago you wanted to do acting. Now, this industry, as you're learning and are in it right now, is a very brutal industry. So has it always been a passion of yours to do acting uh, or is it something recent that you wanted to try out? Uh, well, I mean, a little bit both, you know, honestly, uh, I've always loved, had a love for movies uh, and, and shows. I just didn't know how to get into acting. I didn't know it was a thing, but at, at some point I had some friends in where I used to work in Albuquerque, New Mexico, that were uh, starting to get roles background uh, and, and getting upgraded from background of principal on shows like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. But all these movies that they were filming out in, near Santa Fe, New Mexico uh, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I worked on a set of a few of them. And I was like, wow, this is really interesting. But I had no connections. I didn't know how to get into it. But um, I just started making a few phone calls, really looking into it. And as a fan of the horror genre, just being a, a fan of the Friday the 13th series and all these other ones, uh, a friend asked me to assist him with uh, Roseblood, a Friday the 13th fan film yep. that just came out recently. We had uh, so, Peter Anthony as our guest. Yep. Yeah, that's that's who, who reached out to me. He knew I was a big fan. And my role changed a few times, um, a few times. But either way, I said, hey, whatever you want, I'm, I'm on board. I had no experience uh, or anything but i you know i flew out to from maryland to basically seattle washington to help with that project and now i still have a, a few lines but they're they're going to be in the uh, dvd you're going to have to get the dvd uh you know basically the special edition but i only have a cameo appearance as my first really on camera but from there it, you know it went to they were really looking specifically for police officers and military background for walking dead world beyond crm soldiers and you are so, in the season that just ended season two yep. uh, the final yep. season of world beyond so tell us yep. about that i mean going from the fan film which is great onto the walking mm -hmm. dead universe is a completely different experience uh tell yeah, us how definitely you for came sure into that audition how did you get the role well, tell was, us about it was really uh use the term uh, featured background reoccurring, but other people say you don't use the word feature, or, you know, the terminology featured background anymore, but that's really what it was. It was actually my wife just seeing some type of social media post and saying, Hey, I don't know if you're interested. And I was like, Oh, cool. So, you know, I put in for that and um, Hulu's dope sick at the same time. And I never really expected a call back. I figured it'd be a one chance of a million or one in a hundred. And I figured, Oh, they got probably plenty of people. And then I realized, you know, like, um, just my police pictures and resume uh, and, and being able to show that to background casting, you know, they're looking for a soldier or a cop. I kind of fit the mold, you know, um, for that. So they called me and, you know, filmed a few days and then, you know, I ended up getting picked up more and more. So then really it was all about just my availability. And I could tell you it's hard. Sometimes I'm working midnight shift in Maryland. And, you know, changing cars uh, and clothes and then driving straight to the set for an early a.m. You know, call time, which is in Richmond. And, and, and that is a hall. Yeah. That's a hall so because I live in the D.C. area as well. That's a, yeah. that's a pretty big hall right there. That's uh, two hours, two hour drive each way. Every every day I filmed and then every day I 
didn't film, I was still driving down three days a week for COVID testing. <laughs> And I tell people it's funny because AMC and Star Wars Productions paid me more for COVID testing than they did for actually filming. <laughs> so so um, you get on this set, you're on The Walking Dead World Beyond. Uh, what was that experience like? Uh, you know, it, it was great. You know, first real, you, you know, union set. Um, I learned a lot. And, and as far as who I interacted, and actually it's funny, as one of my partners, a fellow CRM soldier, John Luterman, is here on set uh, uh, um, of the film or the TV series we're filming right now. So I'm learning about the whole networking and um, it, it's, it's, it's really great. But, you know, I was pretty much uh, in a lot of episodes with, I think it was episode eight, but I'm, I'm, I'm with Robert uh, Palmer Watkins. So mm -hmm. Lieutenant Frank, New Frank Newton, and we're pretty much attached to his side as like his, I call it the dignitary protection team. Um, but there, of course, there's some scenes where he's branching off and then, for people that haven't seen the series, but that's, you know, he, he shouldn't have, I told him he should have never left my side in, in that finale. He would have been fine. No, no. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it was, it, it was great. I learned a lot just watching. And I didn't know because I'm, I'm a, just self-trained, uh, you know, taking teaching, uh, acting classes and stunt classes, just self-trained. And there's people I work with in scenes that they, these guys have trained like at schools and colleges and have theater background. And I don't have any of that. Yep. So I'm just trying to, I'm being myself as a police officer and I'm, I'm just adding maybe just a little bit of twist to it or, you know, I could play it, you know, the soldier roles and stuff like that. So I'm just adding a little bit of twist to it, but uh, I learned so much. I, I didn't know that. I thought you had to memorize all your lines for your whole episode or for the whole movie. And, and so when I saw that you basically sometimes for walking dead, we would take all day to shoot one scene mm -hmm. all day, just the multiple angle. And that was, I was like, wow, there's so many angles and, and, and I was like, you know, I, th I think I might be able to do this. I might be able to memorize enough lines to get through one day of filming. <laughs> so that's the life of a day player. Um, so what are you your know, impressions uh, being in the entertainment industry for about a year now of this industry? I mean, I got to say, your story is yeah. not that dissimilar from mine. I'm approaching yeah. two years of doing this, yeah. and it's been a crash course every day for me. Uh, I have the i'm lucky enough to where every day i get to talk to filmmakers and actors and the questions that i ask them are real questions it's stuff that i want to know and i'm learning every day about this industry so i'm almost two years in and yeah. if you're not in this industry and when you come in it's a completely different world how have yeah. you found the adjustment um yeah, it's crazy. I'm learning a, a lot. And you know, what's funny is I'm, I'm, I have 10 months experience, but I'm, I'm giving my experience and what I think I'm doing right or wrong um, to other actors with just as much experience, maybe more, maybe less, mm -hmm. but we're all learning off, e off each other. Um, and I, I really like it. I have four more years as a police officer until I can retire. And I would like to do this maybe uh, full time. But right now, I don't want to take anything away from trained full-time working actors. Um, but you know, I treat it like a hobby and it's a release for me, the stress, having mm -hmm. fun, you're living in fantasy um, and, and just doing something. And I want to see basically how far can I go? Can I yeah. do this? Do I like this? And really my primary interest was as a police and, and tactical consultant. So I helped was it Lily May in episode eight, just, direct a little bit of a scene that I was in mm -hmm. and she appreciated it. And then she told the background casting that she appreciated it. And so that felt nice, but <laughs> I didn't realize like that um, most background actors weren't going to get any credit for any work. Um, and I didn't realize um, how some background actors are treated on, on some sets. Yeah. So, you know, there's parts of the industry I really like, and I'm very fortunate and, and appreciative and humble and I'm loving, you know, a lot of it. But I could tell you uh, one day on um, one day on a union project, you know, being treated poorly by uh, PAs, you know, production assistants mm -hmm. um, as a background. But then the very next day, I'm a principal character on on another show by the same channel. And then they're 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 asking me, like, you know, can they take my order for breakfast? And I have a trailer and everyone's very nice and yeah. polite. Yeah. And, and I didn't change and I didn't change as a person. I'm the same yeah. person from one day to the next. It's just uh, how the production, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. different people in the in the system are looking at it. And so I want to try to break that and, and, and say, hey, if you hear someone yelling and, and treating people poorly, maybe maybe speak out because it's it's not fair. We got to bridge the gap between 
you know, background and A-list actors that are flown in and paid millions of dollars. <laughs> Somehow. What you're describing <laughs> is not just exclusive to what happens on the set. Same thing yeah. that's similar with me. When I was starting out and I was reaching out to guests, they're like, you know, I didn't say it exactly, but the overall feel was, who the hell are you? You know? Uh, yeah. And as your guest list grows and you get more and more, you know, famous people, you start being treated differently. And, yeah. And that's yeah. really unfair. And, right. you know, it's so spread out throughout this entire industry. And I do believe you're right. If enough people do come together and speak out about it, I think some change can at least start to happen. You know, this yeah. industry is, uh, it, there's a lot of twists and turns. And I know when I got into it, uh, I was just blown away by some of the stuff that I learned. But at the end, uh, we do it because we love it, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a lot of fun. And there's this thing. It uh, should be fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've experienced this, but, you know, it's called the imposter syndrome. Now, uh, actors who have been doing this for decades still experienced it where where they are on set they're getting paid lots of money they're having fun and even themselves being veteran actors um ask themselves wow do i really belong here and it's right. called the yeah. imposter syndrome and uh everybody who's in this business has gone through it or is going through it at one point or another and that's where just self-confidence yeah. comes in self-confidence oh, comes in and say yeah you know what i do belong here i do belong You're right. here you know i i did something right and i earned my spot here so you said you are four years away from retiring as a police officer uh, sir law enforcement uh in your heart is it like near and dear to you do you love being a cop it's it's all i've known uh, for uh, like how many years 20 23 years um uh, uh, but i'm kind of getting kind of ready uh for it to be over to be honest with you i mean it's 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 bringing this stuff to you know to the um to the programs to the shows um but y yeah like some you know it's a natural progression of an officer's career i tell because i was you know i'm a, a lieutenant and i was in the academy i was on the swat team and all these different positions as a training officer but you know you go through these progressions as a rookie and you see it in hollywood and tv they kind of show you things like southland uh with michael kublitz i told him i met him i said it's a great show mm -hmm. uh, that he that he did on that but that's kind of realistic the old grumpy field training officer and the, you know the the deer in the headlights uh rookie uh yeah. and then everything that go, goes with that but the progression of i would do this job for free and then you're gonna you think you're gonna change the world you know um, and, and then you realize you can't, and then you realize there's a lot of paperwork and there's a lot of headaches. And then you get into this you know, natural progression of a career. By the time a cop reaches the end of his career, he's, he's done. <laughs> I, I, or, yeah. you know, some kind of, or they just don't, they, don't, they stay another five years or, or, you know, they don't know what to do. A lot of cops don't know what to do in the, the stress and, and it takes the toll on the body. Um, so you got to get out of it healthy and, and still be able to enjoy some of your retirement. And, not, um, and make it to that point. That's not even to mention the mental health and trying. Oh yeah. To, yeah oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all we all we all have those problems and issues and and um, yeah. So, I mean, we have. So when you're have, on set as yep. a uh, an advisor, okay, uh, how important huh? is it to you to really bring authenticity to how police are to, are portrayed, whether it's a television show or a film? Um, I, I do. And I'm still I'm still in the learning phase, but I've done script review, script analysis. I've worked with actors. And, you know, it's kind of frustrating um, because budget comes into it and time and, you know, the industry and scenes are kind of rushed. You may not have as much rehearsal time, practice time. But ideally, I would like to take an actor and sit with them and train them how to hold a gun, how to how to look like he's really shooting, how to move and how to talk. And, and it comes down to how much time does production have for you to go over that stuff. Yeah. And, and it, it's frustrating because I can tell you, I mean, uh, helping out, I can catch this, I can catch that. But now we have to hurry up and film. So, like, uh, I got to make sure their equipment's looking right, that they're, we're making correct movements. Uh, but maybe there's no time to make this one adjustment. Maybe there's, um, 
you know, and people don't necessarily know that they have to ask me. That's the one thing. It's a niche in the industry that people don't realize they really need. Um, and, and maybe they don't, but something like if you have the wrong insignia upside down yeah. on an officer's uh, shirt or, it, it, you know, if you got the wrong equipment, it doesn't look right. And, and like maybe the casual fan doesn't know, but you want to bring as much authenticity as you can to really help with that suspended disbelief of the storyline, I guess. But it, 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 but you also have to bring them together. And I'll give you a quick example. Um, if you want to be realistic, uh, a SWAT team van is never going to pull up to the front door of a, a house or apartment or a building. Or, you know, you break into, a, a let's say, an abandoned mall and we pull up, you know, with our vehicles right in front of the front doors uh, because that's how the scene is blocked in the camera. You, you want to show the cop cars and the cops jumping out of the car. Mm -hmm. But realistically, no. uh, a police officer would never pull directly in front of a store. And so, like, I can't tell, like, a director, like, oh, that shot's not going to work or I'm not going to be a part of that because that's going to look bad and my coworkers are going to tease me. I have to tell them, and, and they do ask, okay, is that realistic? Does that look good? What do you think? So I have to be respectful and I have to, I have to really figure out, okay, what are you looking for in this shot? Do you want to see the officers in their cars jumping out? Do you want to get it in frame? Do they have to be in frame first? So I, I have to basically marry the two of real police work and what uh, Hollywood wants to show or what they're looking for. And, and when it comes down to it, the producers and the executive producers will override, <laughs> will overrule any uh, military attack. I mean, I, we had a Navy SEAL training us for 80 hours on Walking Dead. Wow. Uh, um, and it was great. Um, and he was awesome. He was my best friend on set. <laughs> because and that's of, where, that, as a fan, yeah. you know, when we as fans sit down to watch a movie as a fan, that's where the element of suspension of disbelief comes in, okay? Yeah. For the director, for the producer, yeah, to be, you know, if it's an action sequence, they want to build up the action. They don't want to do it like they really do it in real life where the cops right, right. go in stealth from the back and try to not be noticed until the last minute. They want the right. whole flash and bang, you know, cops pull up, lights blaring, the SWAT yeah. truck pulls up to the front, they jump out, they, you know, take down the building. And it makes you appreciate, uh, like, people like Stephen Pochko. I mean, he's the guy who created, like, NYPD Blue, uh, okay. Hill Street Blues. And the amount of time that he took in getting the right people on set to make sure, like, in for NYPD Blue, like, the NYPD is portrayed properly and right, right. realistically and i love yeah. that show and part of the reason why i love that show is because it doesn't make it doesn't put cops and make them look all glamorous and cool flashing right. a badge and everything just falls into place it shows you a real life depiction of what a cop's yeah. life is really like and the truth of the matter is you guys go out there you put your lives on the line every day you don't know what each day is going to bring and it's it's hard. It takes a toll on you physically and mentally. As you look back on your career as a cop, uh, do you have any regrets, or are you just thankful and you're glad at the career that you started out with? Well, I'm blessed with my with my health so far, um, and, and I've worked for a few different agencies, um, and I've had as much experiences. I've had so much training, more training than anyone else I know. Um, so I'm blessed. I was on a SWAT team. I was an academy instructor. Um, and now and now I'm going through the ranks, you know, at the very tail end of my career um, and, and just just want to be able to keep my health and make it out uh, alive and safe and enjoy that retirement. Um, but you're talking about the realism. I got to let you know, uh, being on the uh, HBO Wheel in the City was yeah. my first SAG principal role. Uh, I have um, three scenes. I'm in two episodes, but I got to meet John Berthal. Uh, as a fan six years ago at a Walking Dead convention, and I took a selfie with them, and then I, I, I caught him again in the makeup trailer. I saw and that I, picture I, of you on yeah. your IMDb yeah. profile, yeah. And I, and I think I like I, I scared him, but I had to tell him like, "Hey, I'm I'm, I'm Detective John Cluel," you know. And then he's like, "Oh, oh," and I showed him the selfie, and I said, "Hey, can you mind if we could take another selfie so we can like show the before after?" <laughs> and he thinks it's a great because he, he kind of remembered the day; it was his birthday, and they were you know he was done. Uh, um, with autographs and I ran up and they were about ushering him out and then he saw me and he stopped his handlers from waving me off and he brought me up there to sign his Walking Dead you know books or punish he he was cast for Punisher but he hadn't even uh, yeah I don't know if he had filmed yet 
but real good guy. So I got the oh, film yeah. uh, with those guys on We Own the City and, and real gracious that I that I booked my first Zoom audition ever as an actor. John um, Bernthal, and, and, who of course played yeah. Shane in the first two yeah. seasons of The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Great guy. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had the, the chance to talk to him yet. I hope to talk to him one day soon. But yeah. all the stories you hear about John is he's just a great guy to be around and oh, to yeah. work with. Everybody loves him. And he's a, yeah. he's a true professional. As your that, that that show, they, they did so many. Um, they had police consultant. They got it realistic. And, and uh, the director, Ronaldo Marcus Green, is, is great if you watch his other work. And what I like, and I told him they're really going to like this because it's the same producers as The Wire, that HBO show, uh, that series that lasted forever. Um, they, they're realistic. They show both sides of it. They show like what would an average police officer be thinking and, and saying and doing, and then maybe how some of the public is looking at police officers yeah. uh, uh, nowadays. And and and, and it, that's that's going to appeal to a lot of people, just like The Wire did. That was it was a really good show. Now being. You know, both a cop and now in front of the camera, working as a uh, advisor as well. What film television show have you seen that you know what they got it right? That's that's how cops, uh, federal agents, whatever. That's that's how they really are. Is there anyone uh, that really pops yeah. out in your mind? There are several, and, and like I, I think I just mentioned the uh, Southland with Michael Kudlitz. Mm -hmm. So I met him at a convention, and I was just a fan. I wasn't even an acting yet. I shook his hand. And, you know, a lot of these actors, they look at me like, you look familiar. Do I know you? I said, no, sir. You know, and then they see my haircut, and they're like, you in the military? I'm like, no. And then the next question, are you a cop? Or yeah. I, they ask me what I, what I do, and I tell them I'm a cop. So then Michael Kudlitz and uh, Danny Trey, there's so many celebrities. They're like, oh, you're a police officer? They give me an extra autograph. They take more more pictures. They don't charge extra for pictures or whatever. And, and they're really, really like nice, nice, nice people. Um, but I, I told uh, Michael Kudlitz gave me an extra autograph and everything. And I said, your portrayal, even though his his his, his character as an F field training officer was kind of mean and nasty and veteran and, and and controversial, maybe at times, it's pretty realistic. Michael Kudlitz. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So, Go on. Yeah. No, I was going to Sergeant say. Sergeant Yeah. I was just going to say about Michael Cudlitz. Michael Cudlitz was one of our beginning guests. And oh, he nice. just came on. And that is like what started the snowball going. He was one of oh. the most genuine, nicest people you oh, will yeah. ever meet. He's just a great person, a great actor. You can put him in any role and he can pull it off. Like he can be Abraham, you know, with his... You yeah. know, one-liners in The Walking Dead. And then recently mm -hmm. he was in Clarice playing a totally different character. When it does come time and you're sitting down with these actors one-on-one -on -one, uh, and directors are not there, the producers are not there, it's just you and the actors. Uh, do you find that the actors are very engaged in what you're trying to teach them? Yes, and they'll they'll ask me for help before I can uh, say hello. Uh, so I, on this set, uh, I, I'm meeting people, and they realize they hear that I'm a police officer. It's my first day on set, and I had multiple actors run right up to me and and, and ask me a million questions, ask me to get with them to show them you know, like, how would an officer talk, how would this officer talk, you know, like how is my guy? What do you see my guy as? And, and that's awesome because now I'm having like creative. Uh, like input and how an actor should portray his cop role and and, and they're, uh, every cop role not they're, they're not all the same no. so okay you're you're a bad cop you're a good cop but um you know they're asking for almost all of the actors i've ever interacted with um are going to seek that out most of them are almost all of them are going to be receptive uh to feedback and, and uh, direction um but then i still have to understand like they you got to let them make their creative choices uh, and then some actors that are just in their zone, they don't want to be told necessarily, you know, what to do and stuff. I had, I'm not going to say who, but I had an actor miss his cue on one of my scenes. And I politely asked him, um, politely asked him if he was going to uh, shrug his shoulders, you know, because he hadn't in the, the, the one or two rehearsals. And he looked at me and said, what, huh? What do you mean? <laughs> so I was like, I wasn't going to say, hey, didn't you read the script? You're supposed to shrug your shoulders. 
So I was like, well, it's just a little bit more difficult for me. And that that's a little bit of the culture too, as a day player, you're, you're having to adjust um, uh, for, 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 for maybe the, the you know, that the, uh, the other series regulars, you know, you have to uh, adjust to them and, and acting, obviously it's all interaction. It's how you interact. Uh, it, it's not just, you know, deliver my line at this time. Um, it's, it's the human interaction, which is really what the camera's trying to capture. <laughs> What did you think when you got so, on, uh, going back to the world beyond and just those CRM uh, uniforms? Uh, uh, I, mean, I could tell you stories. They're, they're custom made. They cost $3,500. Uh, $3, they're very uh, tight fitting uh, and it's very hot. We had one CRM soldier that passed out of heat exhaustion in one of those scenes in the woods oh, where, the, where we have those dog catchers, zombie dog catchers, and it's like a flashback scene. Uh, we lost one of our CRM, um, and she, you know, she was healthy and came back. Um, but she was one of my best friends on set to work with. Um, but I lost 40 pounds in a year, and I attribute at least 30, 35 pounds while filming Walking Dead World Beyond because I really ate healthy on set, and I sweat a lot. Mm -hmm. And I told, I told myself I have to lose five pounds to be able to fit into this outfit, and, and five pounds turned into you know 35, 40 pounds. So I think I, I look different from the day I started and they fit you know, they fitted me to like my, you know, my last day. <laughs> would you say, so I just got, uh, would you say that the walking dead universe to date has been the biggest budget thing that you have done? Uh, it's definitely the biggest, um, uh, your franchise. This is now three different series. And I guess CRM is the only one that's uh, been on all three series. Mm -hmm even though it gets confusing with timelines and yeah. stuff. Um, they, do that, uh, they do that intentionally. They want to keep people guessing yeah. as far as the timelines go. Yeah, everyone just kept asking me about Rick and Rick. Uh, you know, when's Rick coming back? What did oh you do God. with Rick? I mean, I got, I, got, I got fans. I literally have fans across the, the world asking me. <laughs> yeah. And they know. I mean, me too. When, when are we going to see Rick? What yeah. did you do with Rick? And yeah. I tell some of them, I said, you... You know, we'll deliver Rick when when the CRM soldiers get the proper on screen credit. <laughs> oh my God, that, back, takes, that, back, that takes me back. Background here. didn't get any credit. You know, their yeah. stunt the stunt coordinator got no credit. The, the military advisor got no credit. Um, it, you know, and and I didn't realize that was kind of a thing. Like like most productions, most shows. I'm not sure about movies. I was in Don't Look Up. It's in the theaters. I don't know if my scene is is visible or if I'm visible. So I, I, maybe I got to wait till it's Netflix in a couple of days. Um, but that's like my first, uh, you know, big budget movie, I guess. And that was, that was pretty cool. So for people wanting to get into acting, you would recommend, you know, go in, start out as a stand in uh, background and work your way up or, it, or would you say I think it's, get some training? Uh, uh, both do everything. You really have to pr uh, promote yourself, get as much training. But every actor's, we met a guy, uh, my friend is a uh, actor um, from Europe. We were, we're, you know, was getting a rental car for him today. And, and the guy said, well, how'd you get into acting? Both you guys. And I looked at him, I said, every path, everyone's path's different. Mm -hmm. So um, it depends on where you're at in life, what kind of schooling you have. Uh, you got to start somewhere. And if I'm all self-taught almost on YouTube, I mean, I taught myself how to drag race basically off of YouTube. Oh. <laughs> I mean, but you talk to people and networking is very, very important. It's crucial. Some people say the first thing you have to do is get headshots. I, I didn't, I booked a lot of roles with no professional headshots. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's so you can't just say that that's the route headshots. And then you have to find an agent. Uh, an agent is like really the last thing you need as an actor it, just to take you maybe to the next level but depending on where you're at in life and, and in training but you obviously start training uh do whatever you can do start volunteering really really most people in the industry will tell you do do uh the fan or not fan films but the short films mm -hmm. the 48 hour i did a 48 hour fan film i'm sorry just a 48 hour uh, film festival for washington dc but get into anything you can just for the experience and then learn. And then you just take it one step at a time. And I tell you, I, I, all my friends that, that work that are, or we're on walking dead, you know, world beyond uh, some of them have ambitions to do more acting. Some don't, some can't because of their job. I'm very fortunate. I can, you know, kind of take days off here or there. Um, but everyone's kind of different. Um, and, and so, you know, success doesn't happen overnight, but I put in a, people don't see a lot of the work 
actors put in, you know, oh, yeah. really off, off screen to get to that point. But I tell people, hey, you could become an expert in almost anything you put your heart, heart and desire to and just push, you know, do a little bit of something every day to get towards the goal of where you want to go. And you, and 10 months later, a year later, then be able to look at your accomplishments. And I totally I mean, I just, agree with you when it comes to networking. Yeah. That is just so crucial, yeah. especially if you're looking to get started. Unless you already know or have a family member who works at yeah. a studio or whatnot, networking is one of the most important things. And you're right. You get the agent when you are ready to go, basically. So yeah. I, I totally agree with you uh victor wow this has been a fascinating chat uh, how many more days we can ask do you have left on that set before your scenes are up uh well because what's uh shooting out of sequence i still have uh, a pickup scene another two minor scenes and and, and then one cool scene so i'm thinking three, maybe four days I, I had to tell my wife i said hey Look, I promise I only got a few more days of filming next month. Um, but you, if you can call it a co-star, if you, if you want, we got a lot of good Be actors. careful with um, that wife thing. I said that to my yeah. wife two years ago, <laughs> and here we are right. two years later. <laughs> you know, I, I do I do like staying staying, staying busy. Um, but, um, yeah, just a few, like, pickup days and a few scenes um, so my schedule will loosen up. But I had to basically stop working overtime at my police job in order to become more available, uh, uh, you know, for the for the, you know, to keep an open schedule really for shooting. For and you got to be flexible with yeah. filming. And another and people, always changing. Another thing yeah. people need to understand is, just because your job puts you in front of a camera, does not mean you're automatically rich. Okay, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people. No, have I. A, a lot of people have a misconception that if you're on TV, well, you must be rich. No, yeah, that no. is like I, the complete opposite. I'm taking a pay cut. I, yeah. I tell people I'm taking a pay cut. But is it, it you, you got to do the grind, the two hour drive to Richmond every day for a background role you're not going to get credit for, uh, uh, for the experiences alone. Uh, um, and, and, you know, like I said, I worked with Robert uh, Palmer Watkins, you know, a lot. And he didn't teach me everything I know, but he, he gave me some inside tips and a really nice guy. And uh, just having like actors treat you like like regular humans and, and interacting with you. And some actors are you know interact with you if your backgrounds. Some may not. Some are in their zone. Um, and that really you know, comes he, down to personality more than anything. Yeah, sure. You know, and that's people, like anything. Yeah. Yeah, personality. Some people sort of I don't know. But yeah, I'm having 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 a great time, and the money if it comes, it comes. Um, but I'm doing really laying, what do you call it? The brickwork or laying exactly. the foundation, uh, to get there and the networking. And it's, I tell people the networking is not, not a bad thing because people say, well, it's all who, you know, with a, they say it with a negative connotation, yeah. but I can tell you right now that people working behind me on set, uh, there's at least a half dozen, maybe a dozen people that are working right now because they networked with me. And, and, and like I reached out to them because I, you know, they're friends of a friend mm -hmm. or I saw a little bit of, of their work. And that's not a bad thing. If you can, no. you know, whether you call it vouching for someone, but you're you're helping people yeah. that you think would be good in a role. And if they want the role, sure, if they, if they get it, great. If they don't, they don't. But, um, you know, we're helping each other. I just, and this you know, their attack is not as big as people think it is. Word does yeah. get around and networking is so vital we word does spread uh and it's, yeah it's just oh man i just cannot overstate the importance of just getting out there getting to meet people and then having those people introduce you to other people and it's and i so see on. it working right now it's 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 so big it's helping me and that's why i some people may worry about competition telling people about roles or telling people about what's going on and that's unfortunate because I think they're real limiting. I find more, um, you know, I find it uh, better to, to give than to receive as far as, um, you know, and it'll, it'll come back to you. You know, yeah. you, you know, basically it's karma, but, you know, the networking I've given has helped other people. And then, I, you know, I was on FaceTime hours ago with a, like a great A-list actor from the Saw franchise. And he's just FaceTiming and just saying hello to a guy. And then now I'm going to be working in a project with them. And wow. then, you know, he's helping with production and, you know, or he's helping, he's going to be helping with uh, distribution on a project that I'm attached to. So like that came out of the blue yeah. it's because 
of meeting, meeting somebody or talking to somebody else. And I would say, you know, always be open to like, what do you call them? Friend request and, and, and follow people on social media and, and interact with them, engage them uh, and then build your tree out, um, you know, male or female. Uh, um, and then the, the, the networking is just, it's, it's huge. And I got to, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share great. our story on how we met because I have the deepest respect. You reached out to me. And it was really during the mid to end November where I, we were just slammed with guests. And I said, I'd love to have you on, uh, but I'm going to reach back out to you in mid-December. Now, when I wrote that, I knew how that would be interpreted. Like, okay, he's going to forget about me. Because that's how this no, is. No, 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 no. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. But that's how you're, you're, you get trained on how this industry works. But I never forgot about you. And then mm -hmm. once the schedule, the first week and two of December lighten up, I'm like, I'm going to, I got to email Victor. You know, I want to yes. get him on the show. I want to hear his story no. because yeah, everybody is, is important. And I totally respect the way you reach out and, and just how you do business. And you and I share the same philosophy on how some things need to be changed and, and whatnot. So I totally respect that. And I loved yeah, I having you it. on this show. I think that was yeah, great. great. You shared some excellent information with us. And I wish you nothing but the luck, but the best yeah, of luck. Great. I think you're going to you succeed. And when retirement does come from the force in four years from now, and you can pursue this full time, you know, I tell everybody now, never say never. You never know what's going to oh, yeah. happen. So yeah, everyone's everyone's path's different, and I'm just been just been blessed, and I'm enjoying the ride. <laughs> Absolutely, Victor. Thank you so much for coming on here, sharing your story. Hey, and I great. do definitely want to bring you back at some point so we can yeah, sure. talk about prog progress and just see where you're at. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Appreciate I wanna, it. Thank. You. I want to give a big thanks to Victor. Thank you to our audience who tuned in tonight. Uh, till next time, guys, stay safe. And on behalf of Victor Dobro and myself, stay walking. Good night, everybody. Yeah.